Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. I want to talk about mastering. Let's come up a few times in recent weeks, uh, but more specifically, I want to talk about self-mastering. So when you are maybe the mix engineer as well as the mastering engineer, and let's be honest, in a lot of situations, we might end up being the producer, the recordist, the mixer, and the masterer, right? So when it comes to mastering, I think that sometimes people will say that technique is the hardest thing. And to be fair, technique in mastering is a little tricky. There's every tiny thing that you do has a much bigger impact because you're affecting everything all at once. And you also, when you want to adjust individual controls for something, you need a slightly different approach. Like, you know, in a mix, if you want to hear a little bit more of the snare, you just turn the snare up. But when you're mastering, you might have to be like really precise about some very carefully cueing or maybe some very careful compression or maybe some transient designing in order to get that snare to come up. So it is a little bit more technique intensive sometimes, but I think that with mastering, the real challenge is actually perspective. The big issue is that f for me, at least as a mix engineer, once I'm done the mix, if I'm if I'm done the mix, really I should also be done the master because if I need to do anything else or change anything else, wouldn't I just change it in the mix, right? Uh, so we need to get perspective. So sometimes what I like to do is actually pull the mix print into a new session, or in this particular case, actually, I've pulled an instrumental and the acapella into a section so that I've got fine control over the vocal and the uh, rest of the music, but pulling those into their own sec session and then maybe giving it a few days so that you kind of forget what it sounded like and then coming back to it so that you can hear it fresh. So I'm gonna play a little bit of the mix here and go through my mastering process. This is not the mastering process that I did when this record was released a couple of years ago, three years ago, whatever it was. Uh, this is me mastering now. I think I did an okay job, but uh, I definitely feel like I could have been a little bit better, and I wanted to talk about some different concepts anyway. So, okay, let's give it a listen. Arena, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B, yo. Book smarter street. Make fresh to order how you like it. I come tight and sweet. What a currency. I need my coins for that back shot. Before I make this pop, dick the job gon' headlock. We rock with this bad rock. So before doing any processing, you know, people will ask do you, do you use compression? Do you use EQ? Do you use saturation? What do you use when you master? I don't use anything when I master. I use my, my, I hate to say it because it's almost such a cliche, but I listen, I use my ears first and I decide, do I want to do anything, if anything at all? And what's stepping out? What's kind of like telling me it needs to be done right now. What I'm hearing is that the record sounds pretty good. There's some like slightly dusty saturated qualities to it in the low mids that I that almost makes it feel a little console like to me, which I kind of like, uh, there's a lot of really unique textures in there. I think that it's maybe a pinch dull, like maybe the clap is a little bit, a little maybe too rounded, too warm, too receded, and the hi-hat is a little bit, you know, kind of sitting back a little bit. Uh, vocal sounds pretty good. A uh, little bit dense maybe in the low mids from whatever kind of different saturations were going on or just however the thing sounded to begin with. Uh, and then I think that there can be a little bit of sculpting in the lows. This booty gon' bounce. His to sleep a tko in the street some classy but like it still feels like the low end could be a little more dynamic but at the same time it feels a little stuffy and so I i'm gonna have to kind of micromanage everything so what i want to do is pop open my eq here first and so there's some little interesting goofball little things going on. I'm going to try and start with the easier ones first because I think they're going to make more sense. The very easiest one is just getting that hat to kind of pop open. Arena, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street. Make fresh to order how you... So 
this is really simple. I'm basically just targeting the range that the hat is living in, which is, you know, the 10K to 15K. And then I'm using slightly steeper slopes. You can see that there's almost like a squarish look to this. It's because I've used this control over here next to the Q control. It's kind of under the hood on this EQ to make steeper slopes. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to isolate the range of the hi-hat and not touch the vocals quite as much, not touch the rest of the record quite as much. But that's, a, you know, this is one of those technique heavy kind of idiosyncrasies of mastering. Uh, in a mix, I could very easily get away with, you know, not being quite so precise. But basically trying to really target the hat as much as possible and a little bit of pop from the vocal is coming up, but I think it's okay. I think that it still works. And I'm able to lift that top end up about maybe a dB, dB and change, something like that. And it sounds pretty darn good that way. Trina, this booty gonna bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter sh and honestly, that's like kind of the bulk of the work, I think. Uh, now to work on the low end a little bit. So when I, hit, what I'm looking for when I'm I'm thinking about the low end is I wanted to hit, I wanted to push the speaker a little bit more. There's enough low end there. It's not like the amount of low end is wrong. It's the shape of the low end that's not right. And usually when we're shaping things, we're thinking compression, but because this is a master, sometimes compression doesn't work quite as well as we want. So EQ might be a better choice. Getting a little bit more of the hit from that kick to kind of pop through. This booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep A TKO in the streets, I'm classy But at home, I'm a freak Don't put nothing past my B.O. So that's kind of my sweet spot, which is well, 58 hertz, something like that. That's giving me the physical excursion that I'm looking for. Now it sounds really stuffy in the low end, so I'm also looking for an area of the low end where it feels a little too bulked up. And I found that to be a little bit above 100 hertz. I'll boost that, well, what did I do for a cut, like a DB? I'll boost it up so you kind of hear it. Trina, this booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B. So it's not that that's a bad sound, it's just that there's a little, little, little bit too much of it. And especially now that I've done that bit of sub boost, if I just do this kind of cut to counterbalance it, it opens up and balances the low end in a way where the low end kind of speaks a little bit more. Trina, this booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order, how you like it, I come tight and sweet, what a currency, I need my coins for that bad. Cool. And then the only other little thing, just this tiny little hair targeting the clap to see if I can sharpen up the clap. I have to be really careful because any more than just a little bit is going to make the vocal feel pinched. Trina, this booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order, how you like it, I come tight and like you can hear how that vocal starts to feel really edgy pretty quick. So I'm really looking for just the tiniest, tiniest, like basically the absolute most I can get away with, which is really like a little less than half a dB. Now with that little bit of pinch, Although it does make the vocal feel slightly pinched, it also does kind of energize it. It's not quite, it's like just short of the edge of harsh. And actually that can work really well. It can sound exciting. Any more, it's gonna sound harsh. Trina, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order, how you like it. I come tight and sweet. Now I'm gonna do kind of the more fine tuning of things. So a lot of the times there will be like, if something feels stuffy in the mids in particular, it's usually because there's certain collections of like reverb tones or resonances that are starting to build up. And I found a couple of those. So for those, I'm gonna use narrow cuts. And typically speaking, the deeper the cut is gonna go, usually the narrower I want it to be. These happen to be proportionate Q EQs. So, or well, the EQ is proportionate EQ, all of the different settings on these are proportionate EQ. So as I start to cut more, it naturally starts to narrow the Q a little bit, which is convenient. So the first thing that I'm doing here actually is I'm just very gently rolling off from 25 Hertz. I don't like to high pass my masters. I find that it kind of messes with the transients often. Uh, so I'm doing a very gentle low shelf cut and I'm only rolling off maybe about two and a half DB here. So let me, uh, we pop over to an AB so we can kind of hear it. Trina, this booty gon' bounce. His ass 
to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home, I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Yo, Trina, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy. So it's very, very subtle. It's just tightening up the lows ever so slightly. I'll exaggerate it real quick. Trina, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy. So it's just really fine tuning that exact sweet spot for how much sub I want. Trina, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but Perfect. Okay, now can we open up the mids a little bit? So anytime if you if if you feel that there's something a little stuffy going on in the mids, like there's something a little congested, chances are there's a tone there that that can probably be attenuated a little bit. You want to look for something that's going to be just constantly there. So I found one of those at around 800 hertz. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this way above. I'm going to boost about 6 dB, and we're going to look for that real quick. This booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm clap. So notice that like 2K, by the way, you hear when like the clap hits, it sounds really annoying, but for the most part, we don't hear like a constant resonance. Trina, this booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home, I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. But at 1.455, there is something that's a little bit more consistently there, so maybe that's something we might want to ever so slightly attenuate. This booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home, I'm a freak, don't put nothing past my beat. Here at like uh, 1. 1, 1,039 hertz, we don't hear any kind of constant resonance going. This booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home, I'm a freak, don't put nothing past my beat, yo. Book smarter street, may fresh the order, how you like it, I come tight and sweet. And then here back at 812, it's not like completely constant, but there is something that just feels like it's kind of continually there. So if I just take out a little bit of that, you know, maybe like a dB or two, something like that, maybe I'll go find that 1.455, whatever it was, it was uh, right around here-ish. This booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak, don't put nothing past my B.O. Oh no, it doesn't go any lower than that. I'm stuck. Uh... Different, bring up a different EQ, right? Let's do Q10 real quick, right? Trina, this booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home, I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order, how you like it, I come tight and sweet. That doesn't feel like it's really bothering me anymore, to be honest, so I don't think we even need it. Let's leave, let's leave it well enough alone. So let's find, let's cut this down a little bit. Trina, this booty gon' bounce, his ass to sleep a TKO in the street and then similarly I found another little spot like that around 563 Hertz Trina, this booty gon' bounce his ass to sleep a TKO in the street some classy but at home I'm a freak don't put nothing past my B.O. book smarter street may fresh the order how you like it I come tight and sweet now you have to be really careful when doing this because you can really overdoing it overdo it all the stuff that I'm cleaning up that's personality tone and texture all right. So, you know, and we're diminishing energy. So all of those things, I'm making the record smaller. So anytime I'm making the record smaller, I want to be really careful. I want to have a good reason for doing it. Right. And when in doubt, leave it out. So I might even end up bypassing this after I put the final limiter on. I might say, you know what? It cleaned it up, but it lost a little bit of its something special. Lost a little pizzazz. So, you know, it's OK not to do these kinds of things. When in doubt, leave it out. Uh, Trina, this booty gon' bounce. His to sleep a TKO in the streets I'm classy but at home I'm a freak don't put nothing past my B.O. book smarter so I'm gonna bypass it and then bring it in bring it out so that we can hear it and just kind of listen to like how dense it is versus how open it is it's gonna go from pretty dense in the low mids to pretty open in the low mids Trina, this booty gon' bounce his ass to sleep a TKO in the streets I'm classy but at home I'm a freak don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order, how you like it, I come tight and sweet. What a currency, I need my coins, but that back shot before I make this and Then I'm just going to do a little bit of makeup gain. I'm going to add like 1 dB on the back end just to kind of like level match it overall. Trina, this booty going to bounce, his ass to sleep, a TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order, how you like it, I come tight. And then when it all comes together, it really pops quite a bit more. Trina, this booty gon' bounce. His ass 
to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Arena, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past. So I would say that's really like the core of the mastering. I would say the most important tool in mastering, by the way, is EQ by far. Uh, compression, not so much. Sometimes compression techniques can help for some rhythmic things. Sometimes compression techniques can help in getting the record louder without relying on a limiter as much. But like the main body of the work that we're doing is just straight up equalization. That is the absolute most important thing. Now, sometimes in mastering, I do like to add a little bit of saturation if I feel like it needs some color. This is on the fence. I think a little bit of color might be good, but it's already pretty colorful. It's already got a lot of tone to it and sounds pretty good in that respect. Um, there is no like prescriptive way of saying this is how you saturate for a master. What you really do is you learn different saturation devices and what they do. So I've got a whole ton of them pulled up here. I've got, uh, this is not even a saturator. This is something that's technically a compressor, but it's got so much tone to it. It might as well be a saturator, right? Here's radiator. So radiator here is a pretty transient friendly uh, saturator that's going to really bulk up the like 300, 400 hertz range. Arena, this booty gonna bounce. His to sleep a tko in the streets i'm classy but at home i'm a freak don't put nothing past my be yo but smarter street and I love what that's doing. I think it's a little bit, like it's smearing things a little too much. So I'm gonna turn the mix down to about maybe like 33%, but I love what that's doing just to the body of everything. Arena, this booty gonna bounce. His to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my be yo but smarter street. Like it's really, really complimenting Trina's vocal, just making it feel really strong. Uh, here's the Acme Opticon. Trina, this booty gonna bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh to old. And that's a lot more 1K centered. It's a very broad 1K-ish kind of saturation. And it's very smooth. It kind of like puts this kind of like silky quality to everything that I really like. Uh, so I use that one sometimes. Uh, another one that I really like that is a very, very flexible processor here is the Gem Sculpt Tube. This can get a whole ton of tones. Uh, I, this is just one example of using a very basic low biasing, you know, drive from it. But I mean, it's it's not going to be subtle. Arena, this booty gonna bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order how you like it. And you hear all that upper mid and treble kind of pop a little bit and a little bit of uh, uh, hair show up. I don't think that would work for this record. And then one of my favorite ones, Black Box, is actually the Eric Rossi Mix Massive Bus. Uh, you might be saying, hey, you're using a preset and mastering. Well, yes and no. First of all, everything else that I just used was basically a preset, right? You turn it on or you turn it off, and then you use a mix control. So, I mean, it's all kind of presets. The other thing is, is that you can fine tune all of these things. In this particular case, I have fine tuned it a little bit. And this is again going to be very like, this is going to create like this very second harmonic gloss. It's like a polish that like a sheen over everything that, that brightens, but it kind of extends down into like the mids as well. Arena, this booty gonna bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order how you Again, this is a little too too aggressive on the vocal here, but you know we get to learn all of these things, and we say, well, what do we really want from the record? And I would say probably the radiator. I think this is the one that I like the most for this. Arena, this booty gon' bounce. His ass to sleep. A TKO in the streets, I'm classy, but at home I'm a freak. Don't put nothing past my B.O. Book smarter street, may fresh the order how you. Just like a hint of that treble EQ is nice too. Arena, this booty gon' bounce. His to sleep a tko in the streets i'm classy yeah maybe even a hair much actually it might be fine without it i'd say even like a little bit less Arena, this booty gonna bounce his ass to sleep a tko in the streets i'm classy but at home i'm a freak don't put nothing past my b.o and there's so many different saturators there's a slate virtual mix bus uh, Gem Tape Desk is another great one. Slate Virtual Tape Machine is another great one. So there's a million different tone boxes and you just got to learn the personality of all of them and then figure out what's going to be appropriate for which record. There's not really any kind of like magic trick to it. All right, so that's how I approached mastering this record. It was done a little bit differently when I actually did the mix a few years ago, but you know, I want to show you the better version of it ultimately. So uh, that was the process there. All right, if you dig this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell 
notifications so you get notified. Mixing with Reverb is out. It was released earlier this month, so right now there is a launch discount. If you use the code Reverb20, it's 20% off, and the description will be in the link. Uh, the, disc the, the link will be in the description below. Boom, nailed it. Perfect take every single time. Hey, and lastly, you know what we say. We are musicians, sound is our instrument, and I will catch you next time.